Sisters and brothers of the risen Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Those of you who are able to stand, will you please rise and join with me in the call to worship. On the first day, creation began. God spoke and On this first day, creation begins again. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Yes, indeed. The Spirit of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words, trusting in God's grace, 
let us confess our sin. God of empty tombs and emptier people, when we hesitate to speak of your hope, forgive us and give us a voice. When we find it difficult to love one another, forgive us and give us fresh compassion. When we want to stand with the high and mighty, forgive us and seat us next to the poor and oppressed. When we stay locked behind our fears and doubts, forgive us and send us out to share your grace. When we cannot believe your word of new life, forgive us and fill us with your joy. In your name we pray. Amen. Christ comes into every shadowed corner of our lives with the light of Easter. Christ comes into the locked rooms of our faults and gifts us with grace and hope. Christ comes to fill us with peace so we may proclaim the good news of mercy and forgiveness for all. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please extend the peace of Christ to those around you by saying, Peace be with you. children who are third grade and younger to come to the front for the blessing of the children. Today, we are still celebrating Jesus' resurrection, and we are going to learn more and more about Jesus as he appears to his good friends, the disciples. And we're still going to be celebrating these next few weeks, his resurrection when God made him alive again. So we're going to talk about that some more. Just like you all who will be reading about that in your Bible, we will too. So, should we put our hands together? try to do this. You guys. There we go. And we'll say a little prayer. And we'll say, 
Dear God, Help fill our hearts with love and joy while we celebrate God making you alive again. And please help guide our feet while we walk like Jesus did. Amen. You have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our eyes to see it, our ears to hear it, our hearts to hold it, our hands to serve it. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you please, uh, our first scripture reading is from Psalm 150, which we will sing as it is printed in the bulletin.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Listen to the word of God. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever, amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit. Amen. The gospel for this second Sunday of Easter is recorded in uh, the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. When it was evening on that day, Easter, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they're retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you.
Well, I spent some time in Florida in January, February, and March. I worshiped in seven different churches of four different denominations. Quite an experience. And one of those churches had this announcement printed in its bulletin that day. The leadership of this church takes your safety seriously and has chosen to be proactive rather than reactive. Therefore, all sanctuary doors will be locked at the beginning of the service. Don't worry. Ushers will be stationed at the doors to admit folks who arrive late for worship. It's important for you to know that you're not locked in, and you can get out at any time by using the crash bars that we recently installed on the doors. However, potential intruders are locked out. And Jesus came and stood him. I knew <clears throat> that Sunday, because it had been arranged last fall, that I was going to preach today and that this would be the gospel for the second Sunday of Easter. And I couldn't help but think of the significance of it and what that message in the bulletin said about the same fear the disciples had, not only on Easter evening, but also one week later. Twice out of fear of potential intruders. For them, that meant Jewish authorities. The disciples locked themselves in a house. So if the resurrection is a big deal, such a life-changing event, why are the disciples still stuck behind locked doors? Same goes for that church in Florida. What difference has the empty tomb made? How has it changed them? Has it let them see themselves and their world differently? Has it done anything for them? Doesn't look like it made much difference. They're in the same house, they're in the same church, they're behind the same locked doors. So what's changed? So I wonder, here we are again one week later like those disciples. What has Christ's resurrection done for us? Is your life different? Is my life different? Do you see the world in a different way? What difference has the empty two made in your life over the past week? I don't know about you, but my life looks like a lot like it did last Sunday, and the week before that, and the week before that. And when I look at the world, it looks pretty much the same as it did before, if not worse than it was before. I used to read and hear today's gospel and I used to be critical of the disciples and especially doubting Thomas. I preached so many doubting Thomas sermons, I'm tired of them. They're always stuck in the same place behind locked doors and they should have been better than that. After all, death was defeated and so we say Christ is risen, hallelujah, and so why aren't their lives and our lives any different? And I really ask that mostly about us. Why are we stuck in the same place behind locked doors? We should be doing better than that. We should be living the resurrection more powerfully and more authentically than we are. After all, we say the Lord is risen indeed, hallelujah. But you know what? I've begun to listen and to hear today's gospel differently from how I used to hear it over the past 60 years in ministry. I think the gospel's telling us, yes, Christ's resurrection is a big deal, and it does make a difference in our lives, but it takes time. It's something that you and I grow into. It's a process. 
It's a way of being, and it's a life to be lived by God's grace. As we evolve into resurrected people through our relationships and through our circumstances in life with other people, God wastes nothing. So every day you and I are stepping into the resurrected life, and it's not always easy, and some days are just plain hard. It's, a not, it's not an easy thing to do. There are days when we prefer to just stay in bed and pull the covers over our head and lock out the whole world. And some days it seems easier and safer to lock the doors of our house and avoid the circumstances and the people that are in our lives. Sometimes we just want to run away and hide and not deal with the realities of life. But every time that we stay behind locked doors in our life, in our mind, in our heart, we imprison ourselves. For every person, every event, or every idea that you and I lock out, regardless of the reason, we lock ourselves in. And that's what happened to the disciples. They gathered in the house, and they locked the doors with fear. And a whole week later, they were in the same condition, in the same place with the same closed doors, and the same locks, and Nothing much had changed. Yes, the tomb of Jesus was open and empty, but the house is closed and the doors are locked tight, and the house, in fact, became their tomb. Jesus Christ, the risen Christ, is loose in the world, but the disciples are bound up by fear. And the doors of faith have been closed, and they've shut their eyes to the reality and they have locked the doors, and that has become the great ceiling stone of their house tomb. They locked themselves inside, and the doors of the tombs that you and I make in our lives are always locked from the inside. How are our lives different this Sunday than they were last Sunday? If they aren't any different, then where are the locked doors of our hearts and our minds and our lives? One week after Easter Day, I wonder if really our lives are any different. Where are you and I living? In the joy and freedom of the resurrection or behind locked doors? How are our lives changed about what's going on inside of us rather than what's going on around us? Maybe like the disciples, it could be fear. Maybe it's questions. Maybe it's disbeliefs. Maybe it's doubts. Maybe it's conditions that we place on our faith. Perhaps it's sorrow or maybe loss. Maybe the wounds are so deep it doesn't seem worth the risk of even trying to step outside. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's resentment. Maybe it's being unable to open up to new ideas and possibilities and changes. But as we see in the gospel, Christ is always able to enter those locked places of our lives, unexpected, uninvited. Sometimes he's not even wanted. He steps into our closed lives, hearts and minds, and stands among us as he did with the disciples, and he offers us peace, and he breathes new life into us. The starting place for the story of our resurrection is wherever you and I are. Whatever our life is today, whatever the circumstances are, that's the starting point for each of us. That's the room that Christ enters, and if we're locked in a house of fear and confusion and darkness, and that's the starting point and the place in which Jesus comes and stands among us. Don't you and I often share the feeling of the hopelessness of those disciples who huddled in that house? 
Aren't we too often worn out by the relentless struggle and the strain of daily living? Aren't we drained by the constant pressure of trying to do what's right, of being unsure of ourselves? How and when and where are we supposed to live and do the resurrected life? And so in fear, don't we cling together and spiritually hide ourselves behind closed locked doors? We're fearful as a church of our declining members, of our resources, of our dwindling bank account. We're fearful because we know that the world resents us and rejects us and dismisses us. That's if they even take notice of us. And it's getting worse every day. And so in fear, we come to believe that no program, no plan, no powerful pertinent preacher, no rejuvenated faith formation, not a blessed thing that we can do is going to possibly save us. And we're no better than those first disciples. We have nothing going for us except for one thing. We have the risen Christ. And that's the point of the gospel today. In the final analysis, it's the story of how the risen Christ penetrates the bolted doors of that early church, of the present church in Florida, and how he enters this church and the fearful chambers of every church, every heart of every believer, and fills those spaces with risen life. Apart from that risen Christ, the church, every church is an empty place and it's no different than a social agency or a service club. The answer is always Jesus Christ. And the gift that he brings when we hide behind the locked doors of our lives. There have always been men and women and children who've experienced what those first disciples experienced. And they've assembled in worship and learning and service to other people to find out what God wants them to do in this world. And they experience Christ all of a sudden standing in the middle of them. And they've heard that word, peace be with you. And they felt his spirit touch them. Did they ask themselves, well, what am I going to do with that? Did they say, oh, well, I guess let's just hold on to it. We'll keep it for ourselves. We'll lock the doors and we'll try to survive as long as we can. No, for 2,000 years, like the first disciples, those people have gone out and they've transformed their lives and their homes and their communities and indeed they've transformed the world. Or you and I wouldn't be here today. Do we, like them, see possibilities, potential? Those things happen because Christ has burst out of the sealed tomb and he's entered behind the locked doors that we make in our lives so that we can be filled, that our hearts and our minds and our lives can be filled by him. So I ask you this morning, what are the locked doors in your life as I ask myself? What are the things that have kept you and me and this church stuck in the same place behind locked doors? That's the place the risen Christ will show up and breathe new life and new hope and new courage and new strength into us. And he sends us out to meet and to live through the circumstances of our life and our world. And so I ask you again, 
this question. Are we going to be like those first disciples who locked themselves in fear and that church in Florida? And are we going to just stay there and hold on as long as we can? Well, I don't think so. So let's get out from behind locked doors and let's really live. Amen. And all God's people say what? Amen. Good. I guess you're still may be seated. The offertory response this morning is hymn number 609. It didn't make the bulletin, so keep that in mind. So in the spirit of the first believers, we are called to share our goods in common and contribute to the needs of the poor with glad and generous hearts. Let us, let us offer our lives to the Lord.
us pray. God of wonder, we offer you these humble gifts, signs of your goodness and mercy. Receive them with our gratitude, that through us all people, that through us all people may know the riches of your love in the word made flesh. Amen. Are there any joys or concerns that people would like to um, share with us this morning? Yes, Nancy. Okay, their son is working on his doctorate, and they're very proud of him. <laughs> and I would have said the rest of it, but I didn't hear it, so. <laughs> Are there any others? Yes. Okay, I didn't hear all of that. I hope those of you at the back <laughs> got it. <laughs> Anything else? Um, I think we also need to lift up the synagogue in um, it's north of San Diego that was um, bombed yesterday morning. I believe they were celebrating the end of Passover, so we need to keep those folks and that and the neighbors and friends of of those folks in our prayers as well. Let us pray. We thank you, compassionate God, that you hear the prayer of every heart, those who rejoice at a baby's new birth, those who mourn when the circle is complete and a friend or loved one has died, those who are, who are ill and long for a healing, those who are grateful when their work meets with success, those who suffer because no work is to be found, those who are bored not having enough to do, those who are tired having too much to do, those who are surrounded by the love of family and friends, those who are lonely. Thank you for hearing us in every situation of life for we all play each of these roles sooner or later. Help us to support one another, rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. For we want to be joined together as members of the body of Christ in unity, loving one another and serving the world. We want like Jesus to respond to each human being who crosses our path with sensitivity and compassion. It is in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The things that are taking place after the service today are on the front page of your bulletin after 1045. And we hope that you'll be able to perhaps attend one of those. Also, uh, there will be no confirmation class at that time today. Uh, other than that, are, are there any other messages of life, of things that are going on in the congregation? If not, let us rise and sing together hymn number 236, The Strife is O'er.
bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance and give you his peace. Now go out into the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the risen Christ. Amen. <laughs>